Yeah. So recent. Anyway, so let's make uh, just short plugging beforehand. There we have this uh, new website. We have uh, our next meet meetup is supposed to be today. There's a bug there. Anyway, that should be me. Anyway, uh, because it's currently ongoing. Uh, yeah. So if you want to look at our past events. All put there, all 48 videos plus two for tonight. That would be yeah, 50 videos. And if you want to help, you want to change this from a freaking bootstrap to something better, uh, you, you can just uh, send a pull request. <laughs> anyway, it's just a simple thing. Anyway, uh, again, hi, I'm Bry. I'm supposed to talk about. <laughs> Random yeah, 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 yeah. level Ruby stuff. Okay, and that's what I said. And, uh, and that's what I need to talk about. Okay, so settle down. Okay, so while we're waiting for the food, we're supposed to be eating food today, uh, right now. But since the food's late, we need to proceed with the next talk. Okay, so this is a talk. Uh, this is targeted for the beginners, for the experienced guys. You might not be able to relate that much. You might not enjoy it. So, yeah, just keep your comments. <laughs> Feel free to comment or whatever. So, uh, this is the beginner level talk. Usually in meetups, there should be one. But in most of our meetups, we usually start with intermediate level stuff. Like, yeah, like what uh, Dover had, had done. So let's start off with some basic stuff. That's what was suggested earlier today, classes and objects. So for the, who, who here are beginners in Ruby? <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, so th that was asked earlier in the day. Let's cover a bit about slash and objects. So this is a random smorgasbord of topics. So basically Ruby is just your run-of-the-mill class-based language. The only difference is is it's a dynamically dynamically type of type object oriented programming language. So it's not like JavaScript which has a different object oriented model. It mostly follows your typical Java C sharp type of uh, object oriented programming. So you have your oh my god my <laughs> my laser pointer doesn't work. Uh, you have your yeah you have your constructor and you have your uh, Instance variables, you don't need to declare your instance variables because it's doc type. And the only thing you need to declare are, well, the methods. You can't directly access the, um, the instance variables directly. So for instance, you can, you can call greet, you're going to say hello, I'm Al. But the dot name, even though we have an instance variable name, the instance variables are denoted by the uh, at symbol, uh, you can't access that. You have to define uh, method and that's how the whole there's no there's no well there's really no public variables and like in uh, yeah and like in Java that you can define a, an instance variable as public it can directly access that in Ruby you have to declare a public function that would be that would return that uh, value so new al me that name would return al of course also uh, and there's also some uh, helper uh, functions, helper methods. At a reader is essentially the same as def name. So at a reader name, you to create the uh, uh, getter method, uh, accessor method for the name. So it's not supposed. It's it's not going to. It's not going to error here in the meta name, but it would error in the meta name. Uh, the assignment statement because again at a reader is only for the getter method you need to define something for the uh, the setter method so that's the other accessor you can use other writer but usually if you have another writer that would only get put the setter other accessor put both the getter and setter so that would fix the problem so basically basic the same also the subclassing those subclassing thing, it's just, yeah, just use the, uh, that angle bracket to denote that student is a subclass of person. So, yeah, create the student, it requires the, it inherits the constructor of the uh, superclass, then you can yeah, use this, assign the school. And if you want to check whether an object is a, an instance of a class, 
you can use instance of that determines if that that uh, object is an instance of the exactly the class. But if you want to know if if it's say an instance of that, it's uh, the a class is in its hierarchy. So for instance, a person is a uh, and kind of works for that. So if you want to know me is a person, that would return true, but it's not an instance of a uh, person. And also here you'll notice that again Ruby uh, parentheses are uh, what do you call this optional uh, unless there's some ambiguity happening. And also some weird thing about uh, Ruby because of the whole meta programming thing classes are not closed. You can modify them anytime. So if you declare a person, you can open that class again and redefine some stuff inside. So there won't be an error there. So yeah, that's where the whole craziness comes in the Ruby world, the monkey patching and uh, meta programming. Uh, for the class variables, class variables aren't that used much. Uh, there are class methods that are used a lot. That's how you define a class method. You just call uh, uh, prepend. That's one of the ways. There's also another way. Uh, there's the self uh, error, but this is the basic. Uh, you can prepend self dot to the method name, and it would become a class method. And again, a class method is a method that you can call without having an instance. Same thing with the variable, it's as opposed to the instance variables, you just need to use two at symbols. It would uh, define that it is a static or a class variable. Static is coming from languages that use static. Also, uh, constants, yeah, just constants is anything with a capital letter. Uh, starts with a capital letter, is essentially constant. So to call them, to refer to them, you can use that symbol, uh, the two columns. And if you might notice that uh, anything that has a capital letter, so yes, class are essentially, class declaration are essentially uh, constants too. But that's, that's another story. And the other thing that was mentioned uh, in the suggestion that I was looking for in the thread was polymorphism. Again, Ruby is duct type, so polymorphism isn't that uh, exciting because you can just create two independent classes as long as they have a method, the uh, same method signature, you can call that method signature anywhere. So if you look in the code in the, the new Pinai RB site, uh, you, you have, they have a class event for the event, like this event, venue, also for this venue. They both have a name, and be, be, with the Rails panel, with the admin panel that we use in that site, they don't really, you don't really have to say that, hey, this, this name is where you will get the name. It just assumes, it checks if there's a name, if there's a name, it can use that. And uh, Yeah, so your classic uh, statically type polymorphism, uh, you have to think things differently if you're using uh, something like Ruby. So it's not that crazy. It's not that, it's not that too simple. And in addition, uh, yeah, I think I miscopied, copy pasted this. I should have an example for module, but I copy pasted the wrong slide and I deleted the wrong slide. Anyway, there's also a concept called the module where you can define uh, a class-like object which contains variables, contains methods, but you can't instantiate it. You can, the only thing you can do with it is, well, you can call it class methods. You can also insert it. Uh, you can use include to include it in the other classes. But again, I somehow I deleted that slide. Anyway, so let's move on to some other random beginner level <laughs> Ruby stuff that was the more technical stuff. So this is more of the more non-technical stuff about Ruby, the, the stuff you'll have to know about Ruby if you're a beginner. So first off, there are a lot of places where you can learn about Ruby. So for example, our site, the site I showed earlier, Pinay uh, we have our own list of uh, sites that, and there's a lot of sites out there that you could uh, yeah, that there's a lot of online resources for learning Ruby. The only thing that you have to understand about Ruby is uh, 
<laughs> in discipline, not just through me, it's any discipline. A any discipline has its own set of whiners that just, okay, they read, read this article about this thing, then they already say that it sucks. And wannabes, the people who say, hey, they, they read this article and they publicly announced that they want to learn this, but they don't. So, point is, my experience from that for around three years in uh, uh, the Philippine Ruby Users Group, group is the common theme is that people are weirded out with my Ruby, especially if they dig deep enough, especially when you reach the metaprogramming part. And yeah, I just had a discussion, I think this Saturday, with a guy who, was, who didn't understand why there's uh, it basically didn't understand the point of not having static typing because given <laughs> that <laughs> given that he was working every every time he's working again ID slow stuff the compiler warnings the errors can't really understand how a person can be productive if they don't have static typing to defend to, to protect them protect them from those crazy stuff so yeah it will be weird and another thing that people don't really well don't want to admit is rails is frustrating you can you will be frustrated over and over on your uh, on your journey towards learning this uh, very very big framework <laughs> so yeah again point is yeah, this color color this is another stuff. <laughs> so talk to you, sir. Uh, so yeah, you have, when learning Ruby, you have to understand it's going to be different, and you can't just be a whiner. You can't just be a wannabe. You have to experience it. And again, part of the experience is the weirdness, the frustration, and the whole terminal and IDE thing. First off, if you're a Ruby developer, if you come from a wholly visual environment, say you come from the .NET world. You have to live in the console, deal with it, because that's how we work in Ruby. And if you are a developer, you should, at the very least, learn how to work in the console, because that's like, uh, say, a mechanic who doesn't open the hood of the car, they just, you know, fix the outside of the car. You have to go, you have to dig deeper. So, in the console, you have to learn the console. It's not as hard as people think it is. It's not like the whole hacker movie thing that everyone's using the console all of the time. No, most of the time you're using Rails. How many Rails commands do you use on a daily basis anyway? R F minus R F. Break DB might pretty much just break DB migrate and possibly guard or Rails server and the whole other stuff you don't really use that much. Same thing with Git. Just use Git commit, Git push, Git pull and Possibly get merge, get push force, get get commit amend. <laughs> yes, but point is, if you're not coming from a console environment, you have to learn using the console. And the same way IDE, uh, if you're going to see most of the demos people have, if you look at the archives in RB, we don't use IDEs, but IDEs are fine, <laughs> we're, not use, we're not really anti-IDE, just the point is, uh, most of the time you don't really need them, because again, you don't, you, you know, again, not, it's not static type, it's scripting, so there's nothing to compile, that's one thing that I would use, if I'm going to develop in Java, I'm going to have to use an, an IDE, because I don't want to type all the whole Java C class, but stuff and just let the IDE do that for me. But in Ruby, most of them where well, we have uh, rake tasks for pretty much everything we do. So you don't really need the IDEs for that. So mostly we just use text editors. If, you, if you're hardcore, you're going to use Vim or Emacs. If you're just, okay, <laughs> you're going to have to use sublime text. But for IDEs, you don't really need a full-fledged IDE, and besides, the only decent IDE for Ruby and Rails costs sixty dollars a month, that is dollars a year, and that's Ruby mine. I've tried Eclipse, the uh, other night. Uh, <laughs> year, per year. Uh, there's there's a promo right now. There's a it's supposed to be personal use one hundred for your first license, first year. 
then the re renewal is $59. But there's a promo right now. <laughs> it's only $59 a day until, I guess, May something. <laughs> but point is, if you're going to see our demos, we don't use IDs, we usually just text editors. I don't think it's for you, I think it's for... Uh, uh, you just get your version right now and you can use it as much as you like. No, but it, it's still, you have to renew it every year. I don't think so. I, my, my license ran out just. <laughs> anyway, uh, next is learning Rails. Now this is uh, a, a bit different from Ruby. Ruby is okay, it's kind of weird, but if you're going to give it to, if you give someone, say, learn to program by Chris Pine that's, that teaches Ruby to a new uh, beginner programmer, that's okay. It's not really a problem because uh, Ruby is really for beginners. Unfortunately, uh, say so yeah, I just show them that. Unfortunately, there's a problem with Rails. People say that Rails is an easy web framework, but you have to be an experienced web developer to consider Rails to be an easy framework because, uh, for instance, uh, when Rails came out, the people who enjoyed the whole Rails, the, the whole Rails revolution thing, uh, they enjoyed it because all of the stuff they've been doing and say they're rolling their they're rolling out their own PHP frameworks or they're working with some crazy framework from .NET. Uh, then also there's in the Java world when you have struts and you have struts config, the XML and the whole hibernate config and spring. The whole, the whole crazy stuff that was there, when you go to Rails, you'll be happy because all of those crazy stuff you don't have to worry about. Also, right now, if you're a web de experienced web developer right now and you've come from other web frameworks, you'll notice that pretty much all web frameworks right now are inspired by Rails. So if you're coming from some other uh, framework, you're going to have an easy time with Rails. But if you're not an experienced web developer, you are going to have a hard time. Many people are encouraged to learn Rails, thinking they're going to have an easy fix, get, get a job or whatever, stupid, become a rock star or a ninja or whatever. But the point is, pretty much everyone that I've met that wanted to try out Rails but didn't have that, say, experience or that uh, amount of passion, they quit in the first few weeks. They can't even install the whole thing. <laughs> and uh, again, uh, <laughs> Ruby is weird. Rails and Ruby are thing. And, it, uh, and another thing is, uh, if you don't believe the whole, you're not, it's not really for beginners. This is something that I, this is a couple of things that we see every few months. Uh, not really every few months, every few weeks in the uh, Rails installer. Because uh, Rails installer is the one-click installer for uh, for Windows and Mac, they, you have people who are beginners who are asking why isn't it there's because the command says uh, dollar real server. If I copy paste dollar real server, there's an error because it's in Windows. Why? It's, because they're beginners. They're not really. They don't know the the command line and all that, and we can't blame that for them, but. You have to say that if you're a beginner, you will have to learn the basics that other web developers have gone through. You can't just jump into Rails and say you're going to be a rockstar developer in one week. And in addition, this is one last point I have to make. Learning Rails is different from developing in Rails. So the whole, what, what Topher told you earlier, if you're a beginner developer, you won't experience that until say one or two years down the line. You won't be deploying anything if you're just learning on your own, especially if you're not working. If you're working in a company, you probably have to learn that in a few months. But if you're going to learn it as a hobby, uh, you won't learn that. So the point is, because of the learning curve, there is a large gap from people who are learning Rails and people who are actually developing Rails. And my point there is people, uh, the point there is a lot of people consider that there's really no gap. If you're learning Rails, you, you, you already do, you can do hardcore Rails stuff. But the point is there's really a gap. 
And again, this is what I am seeing is people are keep on making excuses. So I'm, I can't study reels because I don't read, don't have a Mac yet, so I won't be able to study reels. That's an excuse because again, if you're going to develop in reels, yes, a Mac will be good because a lot of the gems that you are going to use and a lot the the whole in, the whole culture is around the Unix and the Linux world. So a lot of gems, a lot of packages, a lot of approaches are. You're going to have to learn it. You have to uh, having a map would be a good idea. But if you're just learning, you're just learning the ropes. Pretty much any, even a five-year-old laptop running Windows XP, you can learn Ruby there. You can learn Rails there. You won't be able to create some really awesome website, but you will be able to learn Rails. So again, that excuse that ah nah, I can't do it. You really have no excuse. And again, you can always use a virtual box and install Linux there and again, follow the uh, tutorials. And there's also, say again, Rails installer, you can do that. And the point is, the only thing stopping you is usually there's a lack of passion. Again, that's an excuse. And if you have lack of time, that's really not an excuse. But if you have a lack of time, why the hell are you trying to study a really hard framework in the first place? And again, it, again, it's not that hard. As opposed to say, if you want to learn iOS and you're just, uh, uh, say, third-year college student, uh, college student from a lower or middle-class uh, environment, you are probably going to have to pull a lot of strings to get your own Mac and your own iPhone. <laughs> but as opposed to say, learning web development or not, not even just Rails, any web development, and any any cheap second-hand PC you can learn web development there. So, point is, if you want to learn Rails, you have to stop making excuses. Uh, do or do not, there is no try the whole You <laughs> don't need new machines. So, again, the people that I keep on hearing, they want to learn Rails, but after a couple of months, they still haven't learned how to deploy to Heroku. Yeah, they're just whiners and whiners. And people who don't want to learn Rails because they're hearing Rails can scale, when the hell are you going to build an application that needs to scale anyway? What the, why are you worrying about things that you don't need to worry about this early on? And besides, if you learn Rails, you can always move on to the, the more web scale stuff and have a lot more problems learning that. Anyway, uh, yeah, just don't be one of those, those crazy people. So thank you for listening. Uh, again, I'm Brian. I'm, I'm your professional bum and cameraman. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Yeah.